Nurse, the test tubes holding our entire stock of sperm have been destroyed. I need new specimens right away. Well, their test should be finished in a few hours, Doctor. There's no time for that. I've got clients with me right now. I want your sperm. <laughs> There's more where that came from. <laughs> Where's your container? I was supposed to use a container? <laughs> Coming to you from beautiful upstate New York, this is the Slam Tilt Podcast, a show about all things pinball. I'm Ron Hallett, here with my co-host, Bruce Nightingale. Yeah, hello. And welcome to episode six, Revenge of the Sith. Yes, yes it is. We're running out of Star Wars movies. We got one we got more one. we can do. Well, actually, what's the Two eighth more. one? We got, well, they don't it's have official not out name. yet. Oh, they have no official title? No, but we do have Rogue One. Rogue One, okay, refresh, what's Rogue One again? It's actually how they got the uh, plans for the original Death Star. Oh, yeah, okay, you told me this, so, so all right, all right. We have that, and then we'll have, I already know what I want to go next, so uh, <laughs> you'll have to tune in and stay. Tune in, stay tuned, ne- same bat out. time, same bat channel. Bat channel. But uh, and, yes. And sp- speaking of that, I know we said we didn't have any news, but that is one news item, and, and you, you actually yes. brought up what you think one of the games is because of who one of the uh, guests is, which I, I didn't even catch on to. But I, you're probably right. Yeah, it's going to be Batman. Yeah, they're going to re- well, well, we'll rethink Batman. But we'll, we'll give some background. Um, Stern announced this past week they are going to have a, I guess they're calling it 30th anniversary party. Yes. At um at Expo. Well, not at Expo. at Expo. See that for those who've never attended Pinball Expo in Chicago, typically every year there'll be like um it's like Friday night with Stern Pinball. And they'll have like just in one of the the um they're not called conference rooms. What what are they called? Um whatever. One one of the one they're, of the rooms they're, they're not conference rooms, they're called like not a suite, but they're like a convention center. Well, like part one, of the convention center. Yeah, in one of the rooms, they will have a um, just Friday evening with Stern Pinball, and they'll have usually they have an IFPA tournament that's usually run by Josh Sharp, and then they'll have like the, last year they had a DJ, and then they had I think you know, hosted by Jack Danger last year. They and have this uh, one too free, this year. Uh, well, yeah, they, they usually had free beer. Unfortunately, it looks like that's not happening for this party. Um, so and then they'll usually whatever the newest game is out. Like last year they had um, it was Game of Thrones the uh, premium or, or the LE might have been the LE. It was the LE. Yeah, it was one of the first appearances of it. So first first chance to see the upper play field in action. So they announced this year it would, instead of being at the hotel, it will be at a different lo- It will just be at a separate location with uh, free shuttle to the location. Unfortunately, the party itself will not be free. No, it's uh, $35 or 30 if you pre-buy. Pre-buy. Well, I think I think it was it was 30 and I think they've already upped it to 35. Like they filled up the 30 spots. Something no, like I that. No, I think it, I think they only gave it 3 days. And then that was uh yeah. 2 or 3 days and then bang. Yeah. What uh, what really irks me? Oh, grinds your gears? Grinds my gears again is as being a vendor, I used to vend at at uh, Expo for 12 years until my father got a little ill, so it's a little harder for me to go out that far. But Friday night is like one of the best vendor nights. And now being taken away, it really will hurt the vendors. I mean, it might hurt the whole show because of having this separate party. And I don't mind if it's during the day. Even It even hurts a little bit with uh, Pinball Life's party. Which they're not having this year. I we we haven't heard anything yet. Uh, no, it, it was it, it, people I consider in the know pretty much have said no, it's not happening this year. Yeah, it got a little too big. It actually got a little really big. It was uh, well, it was it was um, way beyond the point of uh, fire code safety. <laughs> I can tell you that from some of the pictures I've seen uh, of the party, and, and and it was really crowded. The one of the first years they had it when I went there, and it just got even more crowded. But that I actually know, I actually went to when it was at his house. <laughs> So what does that tell you? So the um, 
and and they would usually have that on Friday, if I remember. But it's Friday but during the day. It'd be during the day no- when the vendor hall was closed. Exactly. But now so. with the vendor hall open, and possibly 100, 150 people who might be purchasing something at this, you really only have one good vendor night, which could be Thursday. Because Saturday night, guess what? You have the freaking banquet. Saturday, you have the hall, but you you know, there's only one good night now. And I think it's going to hurt the show and the vendors, and I hope it doesn't because, you know, vendors go out there and try to make the show as good as they can. So I, if you are going to the show and you are going to go do the Stern thing, please buy your stuff on Thursday. Tell them why you're buying it Thursday. Maybe, you know, just show some support to the vendors. Vendors are very important to shows. We love our vendors. Yes, and I don't forget, bring a game. Very big and important to bring games. I just brought three games to uh, a show this week. A show this week? And what show would that be, Bruce? Oh, that's the Buffalo Pinball. But we're going to talk about that a little bit. We'll talk later. about oh, that. Stay, but, stay um, on target. Stay, stay on, on target. target. But the um, the Stern Party, it will be hosted by uh, Jack Danger again. Yes, and it will. It's with... basically the same. It seems like the same party, except they're going to have some musical guests. They're going to have Ed Robertson of yes. Bare Naked Lady. So... You want to make sword that re- swallower? I saw that. What was that? I think there was a sword swallower there also. Oh yes, the sword swallower. Oh and, my! Um, <laughs> they're going to have um, Ernie Hudson of Ghostbusters yes. fame will be there. Um, but interestingly, what's the pre person? Yeah, there, there's there is the there is the what is it the VIP package where yes. you can meet a certain person, and that certain person will be Adam West. If he doesn't die before then. Oh, oh, <laughs> wow. Come on. What would Family Guy be without Mayor West? Come on. I agree. I agree. You, I actually would rather have him sign my uh, uh, Family Guy memorabilia than a Batman memorabilia. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. <laughs> but he's actually going to be the signing of the stuff. So I said to Ron, and I've heard from other people saying it, hey, what a perfect time to bring out your next V.E., and what would that VE be? A rethemed Batman. They're not gonna they say it's the biggest party they're gonna have. So they're gonna release their next game, which I think I know what it is, and I've had hints and everything like that for Aerosmith. Yeah, Aerosmith. With the with the L C D. Yes. Yeah. But what a great thing is the like here, first thing, look, we're bringing out a new VE, Batman. Oh wow, oh wow. And then oh by the way, next two hours, we're gonna show you something else. And then double whammo. That double. would be very impressive. Big bucks, no whammies, stop. Yes. Stop. Yes. Hammer time. Hammer time. Oh, God. <laughs> Speaking of dated references. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yeah, so I think it's going to be two game releases. That's my feeling, and I can't confirm it, but I'm thinking it's going to be two. I think they're going to do a double whammy. It's going to be great double whammy if it all works out. And you're going to see... You know, maybe even maybe even a premium there. You hope. <laughs> you can only hope. You can only hope. But uh, yeah, I definitely think there's going to be a Batman and there's going to be Aerosmith. And, st- today. and still nothing from Stern, at least nothing officially from Stern about the whole ghosting issues nope. that nope. we discussed in the, the last show. And other people have also on uh, another podcast. Yes, and I see more and more pictures that are scaring the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah. Just the clear coat just literally coming off in sheets of, off play fields. Very, very disturbing footage. Yeah, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. So interesting. Yeah, so, that was our news. Our little news. We only had a little bit this week. Yeah, not much happened as far as the uh, news items. Um, so what well, are you if, still working on, Bruce? Oh, what's, me. What's, I, in, what's in the shop? Uh, Centaur. We're back on Centaur. Zach came over actually tonight. Oh, another we, Zach reference. Another Zach is, reference. We offered, Zach, we, we offered to have him on the show, but he declined. Zach is very shy. He doesn't want to talk to anybody. But he does like to help out. He loves to work on pinball machines. So uh, we now have all light sockets working on Centaur. We have all flippers now working on Centaur. We have adjusted all the switches. 
We found one little thing that's bothering me with one of the screw holes I drilled and made because that's where they punched it down on the CPR. It's a little off, a little tight, but hopefully I can work with it and bang it around and tweak it a little bit. Other than that, I think we're going to have a fully working Centaur for a league night for Western New York League night next Saturday at my house. Excellent. With 30 people showing in the league, so they'll get the first chance to play Centaur. Centaur. Well, let's see. Any, anything else? Uh, How's Freedom Firewood? Our freedom listeners not, want to know, how is it, is it Firewood yet, or is it nope, still Freedom? Uh, actually, I barely worked on anything else except for bringing back Paragon from what we're going to be talking about in a few minutes, the show. I brought three games out, as we've told you in the past. Paragon is back in, all back together, and running like a champ. Running like a champ. Well, let's see. In my, my shop... I don't really have. I don't really have a shop. Oh, I oh guess one, more can, oh, one, one more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Uh, the soundboard. We're trying to get an EEPROM for the soundboard to get the sound working on hot dogging, but unfortunately, Zach put the EEPROM in upside down, and we blew the EEPROM. <laughs> it's still a fried hot dog. <laughs> so it's still a fried hot dog when it comes to sound. Oh. Game works great. <laughs> so in my and then, we'll go, and then we'll go over the other repair stuff from when we oh, talk yes. about the pinball. Yes. Uh, so in my shop, if you yes. will, it, I'm still still working on the stars, and and of course my stars. It, my, yeah, yeah, it's not your stars. And you know, you get close to the finish line, and it's in it, and it just then it fails. It's just like you know, I try to get out, but they keep pulling me back in. But basically, I, I had everything tear tore off the top of the playfield, and I actually I had the playfield up, and I noticed on the bottom of the cabinet I see a sheared off screw with a nut on it. I'm like, hmm. And just looking at it, I, I kind of guessed where it was probably from, and I was correct. And it was from the pop upper, the uh, rod and ring assembly. The um, it, it had basically the the it goes through a metal yoke and a fiber yoke, and where it screws in, it just sheared right off on one side. Like they do. Like yes. they do. So. And of course, this is not a part that's available once again. So I have had to work to pr- procure something. Uh, I've actually, I could they use, I could they use. They don't make stern rings. No, they're not the same as no. Uh, valleys. No, I don't believe so. Oh, epic and, fail! And it's it's well, I don't. You tell me, are valleys like a two piece type system? Because nope. on the it's 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 not the rod and rings are separate. No, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. looked I had to look at my my sea witch then. Well your sea witch has plastic ones probably. It may or may not have plastic. You'd I have don't to think look it does. It. Okay, because my nine ball and the stargazer both have the plastic ones. Which I have been told that they basically never break, which is kind of funny. You have the metal ones that break, but the plastic ones that never break. So I'm kinda of working out a trade for one of my spare plastic ones with a uh fellow stern sternite. Who you know of a former Allentown fame, who <laughs> has a lot of sterns from formerly from Allentown. You know yes. what I'm talking about. I think we mentioned I him know. before. His first name we is Scott. I won't say his last name, but uh, he 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 basically just he removes all the metal ones from his games, replaces them with the plastic ones. So we're we're doing a trade because I, I kind of want to keep it original and I, I and whatever. So that's that's coming. So that that's that's going to be delayed again. Getting that done. Are the, is the LED in? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. I totally forgot about that. So, yeah, I, I got the, the color DMD LED display and put it into my Terminator 3. Um, I, the installation instructions, they may want to work on those a little bit more. Cause, as cause, in? Well, as it, it, number one, there's, there's something to be said for something printed. But no one does that. It just says, go to the site for instructions. Sorry. Sorry. So, I actually print mine. For yeah. My and I had issues with that. Like uh, when I had a, the, the, when they were making mountains for Getaway, the Getaway Mountain. Uh, and I had actually, I printed out the instructions. And a good thing I did because like three years later when I went to install it, I went to the site and it was no longer there. <laughs> it no longer existed. So. Lovely. So. And the instructions, it, it, they're fairly thorough instructions, but it, I thought some of it wasn't entirely clear about where it says, you know, remove the old, remove the old one, 
it's not explicitly clear enough, I think, to say, like, remove the brackets from the old one and put them on the new one. And it, because it doesn't really show it in any of the pictures. Okay, okay. And the way it says to, to ground it is extremely, with, with the brackets on, there's an extremely difficult way, which would be to try to put the grounding strap on before you put the brackets on. And then there's an easier way that you can actually put them on, like, through the bracket and still ground it properly on the actual display but i got it in okay now i have and, a question i'm oh. gonna go a little i'm gonna go a little higher tech in this Ooh, higher tech so they're still using uh on a white star board this is actually uh, no yeah this is actually white star yep uh they use a board since uh almost uh guns and roses even earlier they call it a dmd Graphics board. Yes, yes. The, the, They're still for, using that? Yes. For those, for those okay. at home, the White Star units actually had an entirely different CPU and a different board just for the display graphics. Yes. It, it wasn't run off of the, the regular CPU board. And that is the same. Basically, you take you take the uh, that board off of the old D- – because the old DMD display is like on a it's, – it, it's like a metal plate, and it's like screwed to it with standoffs. You actually remove the uh, – you remove the board and you put it. They give you like plastic standoffs and you put it on the new display. Oh, I can see a lot of problems with that. No, no, it 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 is mounted the same as the old one. It's just plastic standoffs, and it has, it, and it's a much smaller. The whole package is smaller than the original DMD. It's very very hey, easy hey, hey, to get in. Hey, don't be talking there. about my small package. Oh, it's your small package. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's very the, the size of it is it's. Very easy. I could see this. This would be a great solution for you know the hard to install, you know the ones where you don't have room. Like yes. in Terminator Three, it actually has an insert panel and has like the the RPG. You would not be able to put a regular color DMD LCD in and fit it in, unless you did some major modifications to the insert board. So I installed it. And my initial impressions are well, I had to adjust. I, I was unaware that it, it just came like with no code on it because when you order it you order it you know for a specific game but you still have to put the software on it so i did that and i had to lower the brightness a little bit it was a little too bright for me it starts it has a brightness level of like five i put it down to like three i found that a little little better for my eyes um the colors look good i mean it's definitely it's it's dots so if you're used to the color dmd lcds where you can you know, smooth upscale them. them and make them smooth. None of that's there. This is going to look like dots. Yes, I love dots. it. You love dots. I do because <laughs> that's, what they're, that's what they are. The smoothing, ugh, it's not what it should be. I'm sorry. I, you're going to get the feel from this from day one for me. I'm incandescent boy. Don't like LEDs. I like my machines being mostly Get stock. off of my lawn, you little yeah. bastard. <laughs> church. Back um, in my day, games are simple. Yes, no, not that. I'm just saying, you know, when you look at a Indiana Jones, you see dots. You look at other games, you see dots. So when I see color DMD, all my color DMDs still are dots. I don't have them on smoothing at all. So because I like it still to look the same way. You like your dots. I do like my dots. Oh, we got a new one. Inspect your hole and like your dots. Yes. Remember that. Okay. Or can um, I inspect, try and inspect your dots? <laughs> so I've been. You know, played a bunch of games on it, just giving it a test run. And really, I've only seen one issue, and I'm, I'm kind of researching it. And I, I may, if I can figure out exactly what's causing it, I will contact the Color DMD guys, because I actually think it's probably some kind of code issue. Where I'll be playing, and occasionally the score display, it will, the, the DMD display, will just go blank. And at first I thought it was like, oh, loose connection. You know, I didn't put something together right. But then I notice it only goes blank during specific times. Okay, and now I have a question for you. I, being... I just thought of it. Okay. Are you new using the newest code or the code they're recommending? Oh. Oh, is it the code they're recommending, not the newest code? I don't know. I don't know. But that's we got to check because it could be the programmer had a newer or older code, okay. possibly. I'll, I'll have to. I'll have to check it. that. I'll have to check that. That's, I just thought of it two seconds ago yeah, when you said it. Yeah, because th- what I'm having an issue with is specifically when it goes into the pop upper area, and not every time, but in certain situations when it goes into the pop upper area, the display will just be blank. 
doesn't show anything. And when it comes out of the pop-up area and starts hitting other things, then it comes back on again. So I'm thinking there's something not, there's a display animation that's not in there. And when you mentioned the code, I know one of the things they added in later revisions was the um, the power surge stuff. Yep. But I did see it say power surge on the display at one point, so I, I don't know. But I, I will check that. I know I have I have the latest and greatest code and DMD, the display board code, because there, there was newer ones that were recommended to put on there, because I think there were some DMD issues originally with it. Um, so, okay, so, so ease, I'll, of, I'll have ease, to of, look at that. ease of installation. For me, it was pretty easy. Okay, but I mean, I mean, for except except out there. except without the, the, like I said, if they made it a little clearer that you know, please, and I noticed on some of the uh, pin side posts, they have chimed in and and said that 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 because somebody had the same question, like the holes don't line up, and they were like, you have to take the brackets off of the original one and move them to the new, but it doesn't say that specifically, yeah. and uh, and just like a picture, like on their site, would actually showing like the brackets off and on the new one would be helpful. Once I got past that part of, of my brain, and like, oh, okay, and I just, it was easy. It was easy to install. It's got you know, so, plastic, plastic so standoffs. You're thinking, number one through ten. Ten being hard, one being easy. Uh, four. Okay. Three or four. Good. I mean, it wasn't, it, it'll take like 20 minutes. It takes some time because you got to you, you do all, undo all the connectors, take the thing out. Um, the, the biggest pain is running. It, it, it runs, and I don't know if the color, DMD LCDs do this. I don't remember having to do this with the one I the other one. I have one in my Star Trek, not next gen, but the regular Star Trek. I have a their Sigma display in there just because I wanted the blue <laughs> color. Um, and and I figure future they'll have, they'll almost certainly have a Star Trek. Code God, they better, and, damn they better. Damn it, Jim. So I don't remember doing this, but on the the color DMD LED. They have um, the long cord that goes to the 12 volt supply in the, the front of the game, which I'll give them props. They 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 do it with a like they have a Y connector. So in case you have another mod, you know, like all the 30 zillion mods that connect to that 12 volt supply in the front, you can use their Y connector to put this uh, into it. So you don't have uh, to. I have a question. Uh, yes. What's a mod? A mod is like the, all those toppers you got in the background and are lit up. You see, I'm, you probably have those run to your 12 volt in the front, unless you forgot that you did that. Uh, okay, now I'm back to my original question. I don't know what these mods we are talking about. What is it? What? <laughs> You're like, like, are you anti mod? Come on, like you don't uh, have mostly. some mods, Mr. Tron. Uh, Tron. When you had the Tron, you had the arcade uh, mod thing in there. That's that's because it's Come cool. Come on. Looking. And I did the lights. Yes, yes, you did the lights, but you could you could say that was on the uh, the LE version. So I was yes, just exactly. making it like an LE. Okay, so hold on. The only mods I can see physically on my game is only one, and that is on an ACDC. I have the 3D uh, train topper. Oh my god! You need That's to remove it. that immediately. Now hold on, hold on. That's 35 games. One out of 35 is still. A very low percentage. Only 35. We've got to get you back to 36, man. Uh, you don't even get me started, but you just did. Uh, I just did? Okay. <laughs> no, no. No, okay. no, no. We're almost done. So, uh, uh, so ease of use is a four installation-wise. Value. What do you think of the value for it? Uh, the thing is, it, Terminator 3, it has okay DMD animations, but it's nothing like if you look at... Like, like if you look at any of their footage of, say, Metallica, mm-hmm. some of their other games that have really cool-looking dots, T3 doesn't have really cool-looking dots, uh, but it is also cheaper than the LCD. Mm-hmm. And okay. and it's... Uh, it depends. I, I Is anything really... Is a display really worth... Uh, well, the question would be, what's a regular DMD worth? Right, right now, 179 Yeah. So is color worth $200 to you? Yeah. Is, is yeah. that is that that's that's what it comes down to? You ask yourself that question. If you answer no, well then you're boned. You, there, then you know you don't need one of these. But the good thing is, when I look at it, when I buy an an LCD, a DMD color, DMD, and that kind of stuff, I look at it. Guess what? I have a, now a spare DMD for any of my other games. Yeah, that's also what I I, 
I think of. And when I look at my outgassing D, uh, DMD on my Dracula, it's like, oh, I know where I have a replacement if it, when, when it finally goes. Yep. It's doing the deal where you turn the game on and it takes a little bit for it to come on. And then it's it, cloudy. It, it, it actually fits the theme. Yeah, yeah, just like my, my like ACDC playfield, it, yeah. it, the cloudy, yeah, I don't want to go into that. Okay, um, so before we go on to the Buffalo Open, we're going to do our quick little games you like, games you hate. And I'll start off this time. Wow. Yes. Let's see, game, games I like. I'm gonna, I could try to get more obscure here, and um, I don't think I, well, he's looking at me here, I don't think I brought this up on a previous one. I hope I didn't. I'll look bad. You know but, uh, me. I'll yeah, remember everything. Dragon Fist. Did I bring that up in a previous never, one? Never. Okay. Never. Dragon Fist. It was the last... Norm- oh, it sounds like I've said... Uh, I'm having deja vu like I've definitely said this, but maybe it was in another subject. Uh, but Dragon Fist was, I think, the first... The last regular the pinball game that classic old Stern made. After Dragon Fist, they did Orbiter. And then after Orbiter, they had the horrifically bad Q which was another bizarre game. Um, it was, it, it just has some of these really cool, like mini, like orbit shots with drop targets. So you hit like an orbit and it sweeps the drop simultaneously. It's mm-hmm. fast as hell, like in typical Stern fashion. It's got Bruce Lee on it, although he's not called Bruce Lee. They put a headband on him, but it's obviously Bruce Lee. Um, and I just always liked that game. That game kicks ass. I played it at a couple shows guys that brought their nice sterns in so games i hate well another one we brought up we, we said it was a turd already but it's really a turd and that's ij4 indiana jones the stern version mm. it is a turd burglar yes, it, it is, is horrifically bad the rules are bad the game is bad everything about it is bad it's like you bad, hit a bad, shot bad, bad. and watch a movie hit a shot watch a movie everything i hate about games, the waiting this has in droves. It is a turd. Terrible. Terrible. Tastes like ass. Now your turn. Okay, game I like. Uh, I'm actually going to change it. I just changed it after you, you just talked about one. It made me go, oh, I forgot about this one. I actually played it at Expo this year. Love it. I'm jealous of uh, Chuck Webster. You just got one. Shout out to Chuck. It is Quicksilver. Quicksilver is fucking awesome. <laughs> it is a fucking awesome start. Oh, I love that game. So uh, you have... <laughs> it's It's got some nice shots. It's, it's, got it's a, designed by the same guy who did Dragon Fist, Joe, 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 Joe Joe's, or Joe yes. Juice, or Joe, Joe Joe's. Juice. But uh, you have a diagonal drop target almost in the center of the machine. What a fucking great idea. You, why don't they do this more often? Ah! Which you can sweep in yes, one shot, all four targets. Shot. Yes, yes. Three great pop bumpers up top. You know, you got a spinner. You got two spinners. You got the, you know, and then you got an out hole where you can actually increase your score for, you know, for each sweep or each target you take down. Out hole, e- eject hole. Eject out hole. Well, out hole is the out hole. No, that's the drain hole. That's, that's your the home. drain hole. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your drain, drain hole. hole. Shut your drain hole. But uh, it's great. It's a great game. It's a fast game. Trust me, if I could find one, I yeah. would give up some of my good stuff for that. Yeah, that's and it has it has wonderful green artwork. With some, I don't mind the green. I actually like the with artwork. With some like weird like woman yeah, with a women. weird head thing. It's it's cool. It's it's yes. very cool. It's very cool. Okay, so, what uh, do you hate, sir? Shoot the pyramid! Shoot the pyramid! Oh, Stargate! Come on, everyone Stargate. says that is Gottlieb's best system three game. How can you hate that? Because uh, there's one better, of course. And what is there that? There is one. Big that hurt? Lights cam- nope, lights <laughs> camera action. That's a system three? Yes, it is. It's the oh. first system three. Oh, good trivia. Yes, first system three. Great game. That is. Stargate. F.U. It's actually worse than Stern's. From the that era, I mean the later errors. Like you automatically, if you make the skill shot on the first ball, hey, what do I get? I get skill shot and multi ball. It's not like you get like you know on Starship Troopers where you get the you know the pity third ball one. You can get it right off the bat, 
And then you get to hear the stupid shoot the pyramid, shoot the pyramid. Shoot the pyramid. Shoot the pyramid. And, and you get the clunky Gottlieb flippers and the the cling the, the sling kickers. And the only thing good about the rules is, and not many people know about this, is hitting the drop targets in order. So the first drop targets were five million. The second drop targets were ten million. The third targets were twenty, and then forty, and then I think it's forty. So if you hit them, in, you know, first one, second one, third one, fourth one, you're going to rank up some kick-ass points. If you don't, you got to take them all down to get to restart it again. So it's the only thing good about the game. I'm a big Stargate nut. Oh, it just kills me. Terrible game. I wish Williams got that that title, and then we would have had a good game. Wow. Well, wow. Well, no. Well, maybe not because they were making Popeye then. So, who knows? Oh. You know. So, are you a, you, well, obviously you said you like lights, camera, action. So we can't call you a Gottlieb hater. No, I'm not a Gottlieb hater. No, no, uh, that's a great game. You have TX Sector a little later on. I actually like the single level games too, like Hoops. I think they're great because it's just pure shooting, like an old Bally. Yes, Bally Bruce. But, yes, Bally Bruce. But you know, but when they started adding ramps or anything like that, you know. And the game, and if a company was going to make, what was the last game they're going to make before they went out of business? Oh, the Brooks and Dunn. Yeah, thank you. If you're going to make that damn damn game, you're destined to fail. Sorry, you are. You don't think that was a good license? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, Barbed Wire was probably a better license, and that movie was a bomb. Oh, and the game's terrible too. So <laughs> yeah, but no, I am not a Gottlieb hater. I like certain ones, just not many. All right, so do we have anything else we want to go into before we go into the, the, the main part, the main event, if you will? Well, we did talk about we were going to talk about 2017, the year of Stern, or JJP. Yeah, I think we could, do, we could do that the next episode. Okay, we'll, we'll make you wait Cause, around. Cause I think, yeah, make, make him wait, and, and I think there'll be enough to, to fill out the rest of the episode talking about the Buffalo pinball summer open i think was the full name i want to get yes. that right yes that and took beautiful place chicatagua new york chicatagua new york at, at pocketeer billiards pocketeer billiards uh i must bow first i must say oh wait, we're gonna ron, do this already okay yep, ron, if ron you remember the previous me. show we, we took the josh sharp challenge where we we're gonna say who would finish higher Yes, so uh, let me get my score sheets up because I ha- I actually had to submit to get the scores already since I am the statistician for yes. football. And, and while he does that, I'll just do a brief synopsis of the way it, the tournament the, the, the way it worked was they had their main tournament, which they had is a you know, classic pump and dump, uh, you know, game based. You could just keep playing the game over and over, try and get the highest score you can. And they had um, that went Friday and Saturday qualifying with finals on Sunday and they had how many games was it in the main bank 10 10, Ten of which your best you six counted five or five. best five sorry your best five counted so you had there's you it it was the max points you can get is 500 yeah yeah which I think at one point uh Josh Sharp, I mean Zach Sharp the uh I think he had 480 I saw at one he point did. He did. um then they also had two classics tournaments. They had one on Friday and one on Saturday, uh, each featuring, uh, I believe, six games. Mm-hmm. And it would be your best four. And it went from that tournament would go from 10, I believe, in the morning till 6 p.m. 6 p.m. and then the finals. Yep. So that was, that was the format. So you had two classics champions and, and a main champion. Yes. So uh and and the classics were also the the pump and dump which yes. when you're talking about the classic games and how short they play it can get really painful really fast. Yes, it was. So uh first day was classic 1 and uh Ron Hallett finished in 16th just out of the qualifying yes thanks they took the top 12 thanks to my favorite player uh <laughs> trent augustine wolverine <laughs> well actually he was not out. my favorite player because he took me out because because basically i was just in at the very bottom and i had the high score on sorcerer i think it was like 3.5 million yes and he to show you the the level of talent of some of the better players, he played in the classics earlier and was the number one, you know, the, the the highest highest qualifier. 
He was in yes. first place for, for most of the day. Then at one point he dropped down to second and Steve Bowden was in first. So, and he, he wasn't even around. I think he left for a while and he came back and saw like, oh, I'm not in first anymore. I want to be first. Because if you're in first, you get to pick all the games in the you, final. You drive the bus. You drive the bus. The classic, you drive the bus. So I'm sure he was looking at you. Yeah, what game do I think I can get the best score at and beat it? So he picked Sorcerer and proceeded to get $3.7 million, like right as qualifying was ending, which for those, it, it, for the math heads out there, I had 100 points for that game. By getting knocked down to second, I now have 90 points, and I lost 10 points in a ton of spaces and ended up missing the playoffs. But you did better than me. Yeah, yes, but I, I blame it. Well, in Bruce's defense, Bruce was scorekeeping, so the amount of time he had to actually qualify was curtailed significantly, and especially well, on Thursday because we did not even get there till 3 o'clock. So we had like, we had we, we, we had, I had three hours to try to qualify. And I only had two hours. Yes. So, so I helped, finished the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. So Ron took day one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, a friend of uh, Buffalo Pinball and a friend of uh, myself is Jeff Teolis took first place in the classics. Yes, with Levy Naiman, another great friend of the show and great great player, took second. Steve Bowden uh, round out the top three. And that's fun with bonus, Steve Bowden. Don't forget that. Yes. And who was fourth? Don't forget Mr. Fourth. Uh, Adam Becker. Adam Becker. So that, then, was, uh, that was the first day of yes. Classics. And, and what, were, what were, were the games for those, those playing at home? What, what wonderful oh, titles did we have? We had, getting to it right now, Classics 1. We had... One standing. Dun, Here we dun, go. Dun, dun, dun. Sorcerer. Sorcerer. Eight Ball Deluxe, Centaur 2, Black Knight, Space Shuttle, and what's FC? Uh, what's FC? FC. You know, we were just there. You think we'd remember these games? Uh, hold on. I got to go to the... Um... FC was Fireball Classic. Oh, yes. Fireball Classic. Yes, I played way too many games on that. It was not yeah. treating me well at all. So that was so, Classics 1. Yes, and while people were playing Classics 1, you can also qualify in the main tournament, and that was going very well. And people were going to be qualifying on the next day. So the finals happened at 6 o'clock. Now, the funny thing is, here's where my... I actually volunteered almost 17, 18 hours the whole weekend. And... uh you were the scorekeeper the, for the actually, finals. I was actually tournament director for the classics and everything, so I made the final rulings on all the classics, and I made most of the rulings on uh, on the main tournament. But with, of course, going first to Nick on very touchy situations. Nick which we Lane, had a, the tournament director. Yes, the main tournament director. But I was running the bus for the classics, and then when it came to the main tournament, I was the guy in the back of the the fire truck doing the big turning wheel and he had the front. So that's how it worked out for that. But it worked out pretty well. We didn't have many problems. Actually, all three days worked out really well. Yes, they did. Day two. Day two. What did we have in classic? Let's do the games first. What 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 okay. what did we have available? Blackjack. Black Knight again. Future Spa. Nitro Ground Shaker. Paragon. And we brought back Space Shuttle again. Yes. And three of those games Our were, mind. were from a certain Bruce Nightingale, the Paragon, the Future Spa, and the Blackjack, which when we got there at what, well, 9, 9.30, we, nine had, we had an immediate problem with Blackjack, which, which really, I, I think, they, they, basically one of the lights wasn't working in the lanes. Yes. The one in lane, uh, the spades, it has each, uh, each, each in lane has a card types of spades, hearts, diamonds, and uh, clubs. And one wasn't working. So I, I saw it when we set it up, and I was like, ah, it's probably a bulb or a bad board. No problem. I got both of those. I'll start on that, you know, Saturday morning. So Saturday morning, get there at 9 o'clock, pull the bulb out, test it. Good. Okay. It's got to be the board. Pop the board in. No, 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 no. We went for the socket next. Oh, that's right. We did do the socket next. We replaced thinking, the ah. socket and fail. 
tail. And then, then and then I think the I board yeah. Well, even before we did that, I think we jumpered it. Yes, we jumpered it, and we, it didn't work. No, it did work. Oh, it did work. I tried. It did it, work. So, so we knew the socket was good. It's like okay, it's not a socket problem. So yes, then we went for the board. And did that work? Nope. So nope. I, I I pulled the we pulled the pin out of the connector, and made a whole new pin, and put it in the old connector. Did that work? Fail again. <laughs> So for those at home, we, we replace basically everything you can replace except for one thing. The wire. The wire. Yes. So I went in the back and asked Dave Fix. Luckily, Dave Fix had a bunch of harnesses around. I cut out about a good six, five-foot piece of harness, put a connector on it. We saw it. We put the, pulled the old connector that we just redid, pulled that one off. We uh, put that new connector in and re- directly ran the wire right to the socket. And what happened? It worked. Yes. Broken yes, wire folks, in a, a harness. Freaking broken wire. I mean, that that doesn't happen that often. No. Usually it's, it, it's a connector long before it ever a broken wire. So it, it, I'll be uh, getting that back hopefully this weekend, and I'll be uh, running a wire along the edge properly to look at, make it look proper, but it will be fixed. It's fixed now, actually. It works perfect. So how did you do in Classics 2, Bruce? Oh, I suck moose balls. My suck game. moose balls. <laughs> My game, Blackjack. Well, here's the problem we have with Blackjack. I guess somebody moved it during the middle of the day. And what was happening is if you get the out hole on the right, what would you like to call it, Ron? Uh, well, the saucer. The saucer. When you get the saucer and you're beating the dealer, you get... 5,000 points, and you get a multiplier. And cool First, chimes, like, like a, cool, a triple. great chimes. Yes. So what was happening is it got moved, and what was happening, it was kicking out, hitting off a rubber, and going right back in the, in the saucer. So over, after and get, over. <laughs> over and over. Over and over. So after you get the three times and the five times, you then get the special. Well, I don't have the extra ball set up on my games. So what did it do? It gave you 50,000 points each time. At one point, I saw somebody get it nine times in a row. Yeah, okay. That, that so explains wait. some of the scores there. It, yes. it, it didn't work for me when I played it. Didn't work. Wait a second. It, I own the game. I played it eight times in the tournament. Guess how many times it did it for me? Big old goose egg zero. Actually, it did do it for me a couple times, but guess what? Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't beating, beating the dealer, so it meant nothing. So, uh, at the uh, end of that qualifying... How'd you uh, do? I finished... Hold on, I'm getting to the score sheets right now. I was Classics 2. I finished a little better this time, 21st, not in it. But unfortunately, the co-host of mine, Mr. Hallett, qualified, I think, 8th or ninth, 6th. Oh, no, you finished 6th. I thought I qualified 6th. Nope, you fin- You were qualified higher. Hold on, let me check. Yeah, do- do- double check that. Because I-, I had another situation again where I was in a certain place and got knocked down within like the last... Seven. Seven. Okay, seven. Yeah, I was fourth, which would mean a bye in the first okay. round. So, now, the- my, buddy, my buddy here took me out of my... my uh, when we were playing, he beat my, my, uh, my future spa score. What a nice guy he Oh, was. I'm sorry. But but you know I, I I I got well I paid for that because yes you did because I was I was in fourth which the way they do this is the top twelve make it and the top four get a buy yes so you always want to get a buy buys are good and buys I'm like right. fourth well with like I would say five ten minutes left in qualifying um, DJ what's his last name DJ Real DJ Real who was not in yet, he was trying desperately to qual- to get in. He played Future Spa, and he was like right next to me. I was on Blackjack while he was doing this. And he put up 474, 470. I think I had like 450. He beat me by like 20,000. Again, I had the number one score on Future Spa. So I go from 100 points and lose 10 points down to 90. I drop from 4th to 7th. Yep. So that that was kind of upsetting. But I made it. Yes, you um, did. And I did get through my first round of playoffs to get into the second round. So technically, it didn't really matter because I, I got where I would have been. You did. 
Yeah. So my... how did that second round go? Oh, God. Well, the second round, we played the first game, we played Paragon. Yes, and you all suck at it. Yeah, Paragon was not in a good mood at all. I, th- I think there was some... Okay. Now, who set that Paragon up? Some dick. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but but <laughs> um, the Paragon scores only one person got over three hundred thousand in the fu- in the whole the whole thing. Yes, actually, th- no. What? Well, sorry, two people did. Yeah, and if I remember in the second round, someone had like a hundred. Someone had a good score, and then the other ones were like nothing. They were like forty, forty, no, nope. thirty. Your, My your memory's score, bad. Your memory's bad. Fifty-one nine. Okay. 100. Forty-one eight thirty, thirty-nine six eighty, twenty-six seven ten in your match. Uh, so, basically, I ended up third. Where if I hit like one saucer, saucer, I'm saying yep. it wrong now, or you know, just one target bank, anything, I could have got second. Yep. So I'm already, I already am in pain here. Then we go to Future Spa, which I believe. And just to give some background, in my group we had you had me, had Phil. um Fred, yep, Fred Cochran, Fred Cochran, John Clinton, and Phil uh, Burnbaum. Burnbaum. Yep. Yep. So I'm player three. I think my first ball I did nothing. Second ball on Future Spa, I I, I totally destroy it. There's no other way to say. It. I, I spell Future Spa twice. Got six X. For those who know how to play Future Spa, it's almost all bonus. So you get Future Spa once, it's 18000 You get it twice, it's 36000 times six. For those at home, that's over 200000 So at that point, you should only be having one thought in your head, and that is do not tilt under any circumstances. And if you ever play Future Spa, there, there is a... Side in, in, yeah, in, in the right end lane, there's like this, this gap at that ball frequently drops into uh and and uh, you know you always have you always want to save it when you see it doing that and i had it in my head like if the ball goes there do not try to save it under any circumstances so suffice it to say i get a full trap on my my right flipper and at this point when you spell future spot twice you have six x one of the only things to really go for at this point just hit the spinner it's like a thousand a spin no you go for the freaking you go for the you go for that target again. Yeah, whatever. So I'm going for the spinner. I hit the left spinner. And I hear behind me, I just hear like, oh, man, oh, man. And I'm thinking, because the other foursome that's in the semifinals, they're playing Black Knight. And I figure, oh, man, some idiot must have tilted on Black Knight. <laughs> and, and, and then I'm, I'm hitting my flippers, and the flippers are dead. And I realize, no, I tilted. Yes. And, and in a typical tournament player fashion, it's like, I did not tilt this game. I did not fucking tilt this game but that's what we all say yes. but i was really convinced i did not tilt this game and then phil who was in my group he's there you know oh, i saw I'll do that on someone else it's been doing that all day like okay okay and it so, was really a tight it was a tight tilt yeah. and suffice it to because, say get guess where it, i guess where i finished on that game second guess where i would have finished if i got the bonus first yes yes so then we played uh what did we play nitro butt shaker Yes. We played, yeah, which I, I like Nitro Ground Shaker, but th- this one was nasty. This one was nasty Ground Shaker. It, it was not very nice. Every time you got in the saucer, it go right down the middle. Yeah. Now, uh, oh yeah, the, the left saucer, it, and it it started doing that really badly to in the finals to the point where you just did not want to even you just avoided it. Yes. Actually, you'd have it on your right flipper, and it's like, what do I do? What I, do I, I do? was running backhand stuff. Yeah, because I couldn't. I didn't really want to try a tap pass. I don't. I don't believe that was working. So, <laughs> I think I finished third. Yes, kind of, kind of flamed out. Near, 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 near. So at that point, I kind of, I kind of get to relax. I go over and watch TV in a very comfortable couch they have at Pocketeer, and they got you know all the all the game the Olympics on. They had some preseason football, baseball. Yeah. So after like I don't know twenty minutes, I hear run, tie break for fifth place, and I'm like, well. Why? Who cares? It's money. It's for the top five get paid. So fifth place was money. Like, yes. Oh, okay. So we played on was a space shuttle. Space shuttle. You played uh, Trent Me, and you Fred, played Fred and Trent Augustine played, and um, Trent did not have a good game. He's player one. He kind of it was between me and Fred. Um, Fred. Fred had what do you have? Like two million. Yes, he really and, did. Yeah, and I had, you were coming I had, back. I had like one point five million, and I had the last ball. So I had a chance. 
I made like four consecutive slap saves. <laughs> Yeah, just and then it freaking trained anyway. It just was a, uh, it, 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 yeah, it was a, a drain seeking ball. There was. Yeah, Stephen Fred was there. Damn you! You did everything possible to save that ball. It's like, yep, and it didn't matter. So I finished sixth. Yes. And then they had John, the John Flinton finished first. Yep, they had the finals and um, DJ Real finished second. Phil Birnbaum finished third, and Adam Becker finished fourth again. Yes. Now, now, here's the weird thing. When DJ was playing, he tilted. But he tilted a different way. He actually was trying. He, DJ, if you don't know DJ, he's very rough on the games. But it got me thinking, why is this thing tilting so much? So afterwards, I checked out the tilt bob, and it looked okay. Yes, and then and then Ron, you know, p- pokes his nose over and says, hey, let's, let's, let's replicate what happened to me. So we, we basically, I just put all the uh, inline drop targets down to get to 6x and just shot the spinner on the, the left spinner. And what did it do? It tilted. It tilted. And I'm like, ooh, okay. So after some more research, we discovered, I believe it was the 4x target. Yes. If the 4x target was down and you hit the left spinner, it would tilt. Yes. So... We figured it's either either a diode issue in the switch matrix or possibly a CPU board issue. PIA issue, I would yeah. tell you. Which at that point, you know, I asked Bruce, like, you got a CPU board? I got one in the car. <laughs> Want to try it? Sure, let's try it. So, it's, you know, it's an all tech, one of the newer, it's brand new, you know, CPU board. So, you, you're, you're, you're we, we 99% it. sure that there's, there's nothing wrong with the CPU board. So, we installed it. And uh, put all the inline drop targets down and tested the left spinner again. And what happened? Didn't tilt. Didn't tilt. But now I'm going to, when I get it home, it's not home yet. So when I get it home, I'm actually going to look and see if it, any of the other stuff in that switch row. And then I'll put the board back in and then I'll try another PIA. So yeah, it will be, be a to be continued. Yes, it will be a two be continued, but it was bad luck for Ron. But it was bad luck, but the thing is, even in a tournament ruling situation, it was the same for everybody. Yes, exactly. So I couldn't even say like, you know, oh, I want a replayed game. It's like, well, the right. other three players played the the game in the same condition you did. Yes. So there's nothing you can really do. It's just it's just bad luck. But yep. I just think it's funny because tournament players are always like, I didn't tilt the game. I didn't do it, and I said the same thing. And for one time. It was actually true. <laughs> and it was time. <laughs> so Ron's now up on me two nothing. Yes, so so to go up, yes, two nothing and in the in the battle. So what what are we now? It was twenty five to twenty four, so it's now twenty seven twenty four. Twenty four. And if you're wondering about the main tournament, about midway through the day Friday or no, Saturday, I decided like I really want to get in the classics. If I keep playing, if I play in the main and happen to qualify, then I have to come back Sunday. And at that point, you know, I'm, it's a five hour drive. And, and I, I knew Bruce, I figured Bruce would be doing stuff there, like either scorekeeping or, or I was doing everything. Yeah. He'd be around Saturday, a little uh, Sunday, a little later. And I, I probably wouldn't end up getting home till like, you know, midnight or something. So I, I figured what the hell, I'm just going to do classics. We'll leave the main alone. And I, Drove back Sunday morning and got to watch the finals on Twitch. Yes. You got to see me on Twitch. A yes, lot. <laughs> that's the first thing I saw. Like, there's Bruce. He's keeping score. Uh, but uh, so the finals I had that night, I played terrible. Uh, after getting, finally, by the time we got done, it was like 10 o'clock after the classic. So I had about two hours trying to qualify. I was actually in 58th or 59th place. I worked my way up to 35th. I needed one good game and i kept on hammering on walking dead and i just couldn't get anything on it and if i just got 20 points on walking dead i would have been right up in 24th, 23rd but i didn't i finished 35th but mr hallett finished 43 so 27 25 there you go. But and, and the thing, the thing that it, in, in all honesty, I mean, you were severely handicapped. How many hours did you volunteer? How many hours did you? Were you not able to actually play? Eighteen hours, almost. Yeah. So there yeah, you so go. I, and and also babysitting the games, and I did do well on money intake on the games. 
here's a funny fact. I had three games that were set up just for Saturday. So from 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock and then the finals. And they were 50 cents, I believe. 50 cents each. I had over two, uh, sorry, 520 plays on my three games alone. Do the math. Do, do the uh, math. $260. Jackpot. So Jackpot. <laughs> I split half with the place because it's their location. They used electricity, everything like that, and heat and everything like that, AC and that kind of stuff. So we split. It was 130 I brought home. Not bad. But if I need a CPU board, I'm down 70 <laughs> Oh, and then my entries. I'm really down. But I could have been worse. There was at least one person. I'm not going to say... Any oh, names, God. but you, you can always you can always look it up on the uh, the um, Never Drain site. There was a person who I think they had well oh, over 105 un- entries. Yes, and which this is was mostly dollars. and this was mostly in the main area where several of the games were at a dollar. Yes, all of them were at least 50 cents. So even if you do the 50 cent math, you can figure out how much money was spent. They spend over 200 dollars almost. Yeah, two to three hundred dollars. That's a lot of money to try to. Just to qualify. And if you didn't get in the top 12, you got nothing. Or top 10, you got nothing. 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 Just like me. Nothing. Yes. So, so I, then I, well, I we would... had the finals on Sunday. Yep. And the finals uh, went really well, actually, I thought. Uh, and there was a cool, like, I saw there's this discussion going on in, like, the tilt forums about, like, that something happened on Avatar Yes. With like like that that there's really no specific rule for. Well, there is a way around it. I thought about it afterwards. Well, they they were talking about that. There's nothing specifically written. And basically, what happened is on Avatar, and I think this was discovered during the tournament. If you hit the link shot, which it, it traps your ball, it's like mm-hmm. a it, like captive ball situation. And if you shove the game hard enough, you can get the ball to go back and actually register like a hit, mm-hmm. like you hit it. And what happened, I think it was uh, Zen, Nick, Nick mm-hmm. Sendejas, who was playing. He drained the ball. And his, his, his ball's draining, and he knows he's done. He just shoved it forward, and it registered the link shot, which started multi-ball, I believe, is what happened. Yes. Yes. And, and the question was, is that, is that like, you know, how is that different than like a death save or, or you know, something like that? Because the, the ball was... You know, beyond the area, like like the the out lane, like it was drained at that point. Yeah, it was. But then people were arguing, how is this any different than like missed multi ball, where the things going across, where technically it could be like drain and you shove it and you get it off the magnet and the multi ball yeah. starts. How is it any different than that? Or uh, Simpsons getting the free points at the end. If you need so little points, you could shove it. So the the skateboard guy, you know, skate, Bart skateboard reacts and gets you. Starts, pop, you know, super bumper, super jet, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. So it is a thing. There is a way around it now. I've already thought of it. And what is that? That would be making it so it kicks out the lock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was one of the ways they mentioned, too. Do virtual yes. locks, and then yep. you don't have that problem. You yeah. got no problems you know. at all. I just thought that was interesting. But overall, yeah. what, what, would your, what would you say? I would say that was oh, a it, rousing it, it success. Really was, a rousing success. Uh, I mean, uh, the there were some job. typical, yeah, I mean, some mechanical issues, but... Over everything um, stayed up and running. Um, I, the food two, trucks were awesome. I like that. What, what that? What was the one on Anderson's? Yeah, the yeah. I went, I went out cream. there for a turkey sandwich. Then I went out there for a chocolate shake. Then I went out there for a chocolate sundae. So I, I was liking Anderson's. Yes, Anderson's really good. And then they also had a Polish villa, which had kibasi. And uh, they came back Sunday morning in the Polish Villa, and they had breakfast, and they had kibasi again, and uh, potato pancakes and pierogies. Anderson's definitely was a hit because of the roast beef and the beef on wick. Really good. Uh, Nick, Kevin, great job. Uh, Barry and uh, Dave Fix and kept them all running. Uh, I think there was only a couple major malfunctions, but most of them worked through. Uh, they had Kiss apart for at least an hour because one of the opto wires broke Behind Gene. Well, so. Gene, Gene is always a pain in the ass. It doesn't. He is. Oh, no, he's yes. an asshole. Literally, yes, just always. Well, that's that's one of his. That's actually one that's of his, his solo, solo albums. Album. Asshole. Yeah. How yes. appropriate. How appropriate. And you would know that being Mr. Kiss. Yes, since I am, I have that album. Oh God. <laughs> no. I do have the album. It's great. Yes, folks. He has he has like the Kiss member solo albums. That's how hardcore he is. Yes, I am. Yes, very much so. <laughs> but uh, overall, great show. 
Ex- actually, not a great show, an excellent show. Not I, like, I would know. recommend it as a tournament. Uh, yes. I mean, and it finished relatively on time. I mean, as, as, as on time as tournaments go. I had to leave at 5 o'clock, so guess yeah, what? Yeah, I noticed, I noticed but, you were gone, but I mean, it it didn't go to like 11 at night or, or the next morning or no, anything no, insane. No. Um, I, I like the location. I'd never been there before. I wish there was something like that where I am. I think but, everyone would love to have but, that place. But there isn't. That's just the way it goes. Um, I mean, I, I'd recommend it to anyone. Um, I had a fun time. A splendid time was guaranteed for all. <laughs> uh, definitely, I think they're already talking about next year. If they can get the open again, you know, that's yeah. going to be the... But I think it worked out really, really well. Uh, who knows? You probably won't see my games there next year, though, unfortunately, because I want to play. You want to play? You want to play? I want to. I want to kick Ron's ass. Oh, you want to kick Ron's ass? I was thinking, you know, if I have another vehicle by then, maybe I'd bring a game. I, I, oh, I'd like to good. see. I'd like to see stars destroy people. Oh God! I'm sick like that. I like bringing the really hard games and just okay. watching them destroy okay, players that are better than me. It just. It. It. I. I just get off on that for some reason. Well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Okay. If you bring stars, I will bring Sea Witch. Okay, so we have we if you haven't sold to me by then, uh, so we have oh. a thing. We we have a thing. We'll we'll see, and, and and surely we will still be on the air this time next year for episode hundred by then. I'm sure. Yes. But uh, let's go over the main uh, people who won in the main tournament. Uh, Trent Augustine was our winner, Zach winning Sharp his three thousandth tournament. Yeah, this week. <laughs> yeah, Zach, Zach Sharp was second. Alberto Santana was third. Great showing by Alberto. And uh, Steve Bowden, friend of the show, fun with bonus, was fourth, with Levy rounding out the top five. Yeah, like um, Alberto blew up Walking Dead that last oh. game. What did he have, like 400 million, whatever it was? Is Well, you didn't see, actually, Tim Sexton. The one thing I wish you guys did see, and they talked about it later on, was Tim Sexton. Two billion on that stupid World Cup. Three billion. Three Three billion billion on World Cup soccer, which if you played this thing, it had the what Titan rubber things on there. But that that wasn't really the issue for me. The issue was the goalie was it it was it was one of these goalies like it didn't move at all. It would move like an inch either way. It hardly moved. So you would get multi ball started. It was a four hundred pound goalie. Yeah, yeah. Most of the goal. Yes, it did not have full <laughs> range of motion. So when you get multi ball and you started shooting for the goal, all you would hear is just save! What an incredible save! This guy's a wall, and that got really old. <laughs> he just could not score a goal. So Tim actually beat Germany the one way through the, through getting all the goals and going through all the competitors in multi ball. Then he also got the Germany going through. In L.A., going through the left spinner and getting all the tickets to actually go. So he did it both in that same thing. Now, poor Eric Russell and DJ were all just looking there like, holy. And then after he got the multi-ball done and he beat Germany, he just cranked on the victory laps. And he did – had to be 20 victory laps. And a victory lap in a World Cup soccer is just hitting the ramp. So all he was doing it was – he was hitting the ramp. He had one ball stuck on his left flipper, and all he was doing was hitting with his right flipper, left ramp. Came back, came back. He did it 20 times in a row and just crushed. So the left so, ramp, doesn't it divert it like after the second time? No, not in the victory laps. Oh, okay. I did not know that. And I own the game, and I did not know that. It keeps on cranking. I was just laughing my ass off. Going, of course, you would know that you've owned, like, what, seven of them or something? Three. 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 Three, at yes, one folks, three at, at, one at one time. Oh, man. Just, just, you need help, dude. No, I don't. No, Come I on. Don't. I, <laughs> I apologize I to our room. listeners for not being quite as silly as usual. Um, I had uh, several um, comments from people at the uh, at the tournament, like to listen to our podcast and like the uh, the silliness. I'll, I'll try to up the silliness for our uh our next episode. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. yes. No, they, no one liked Jar Jar though. That seemed oh, to be a uh, no. Nobody liked Jar Jar. Uh, but me. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So I talked to um to uh Gene, who's from California. He is um he's an orange photography. You may see in his photos and I'll. In a lot of the shows, you'll see him pop up. You'll see orange photography in the the corner, and he's from California. He was there, and I'm like, 
dude, you came from California to Buffalo Plain Star? It's like, yeah, yeah. And I, I was listening to your guys' podcast on the plane flight. I'm like, really? Damn. That was nice. Okay. That was very nice. We're Hi, Gene. Hello, Hi, Gene. Gene. We're world famous in, in California and Poland yes. now. So See? two places. So yes. Two places. So now if you know, you come up to us and say, hey, I really like you. You we're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about you. We're whores. We'll, we'll just yes. we'll just plug you on the show. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes we will. So get ready for slutting out. <laughs> <laughs> so just for a preview for our next show, we will be talking about the because uh, we said this the last episode that we were talking about this, and we kind of lied because we didn't talk about it. But we will be talking about Stern's upcoming. That their games for this upcoming year of 2017. I know it's or August. Or maybe JJP. Or maybe JJP. Or maybe Highway. Uh, who knows? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Who knows? Uh, uh, there's one tournament this week in upstate New York. Uh, my favorite title, the uh, Pins and Needles, Cloud City. Not Pins and Needles. This is going to be the Characters and uh, Pinball and Characters. Caricatures. Pin- pinball and Caricatures. I love it. It is so yeah. hard to say. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. The next one's even worse. I saw he posted today what his next one is. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. No, it's no. even worse. Well, the winner for the next tournament gets a $20 gift card to a bakery, but not a real bakery, I don't call it. I call it a, it's a vegan bakery. A vegan bakery. <laughs> <laughs> the way your tone changed. What? Was perfect. Well, exactly. Wait a, minute, a vegan bakery, like, what, is, what does that even mean? Vegetable bread? Know. Maybe, but we'll find out. Oh, that is weird. Okay. Yes, so we'll talk about that next week, and we'll talk about, uh, as I said, uh, and maybe my surprise, we don't know yet. Yes, the surprise it, we mentioned, the yeah. possible surprise we mentioned the next show. It was, it's going exactly as I Going as planned, as badly as, as thought, and, and delays, and, well, you'll find out either way what's the going insiders on. insiders suck. Yes. <laughs> oh man, you just killed our viewership with that comment. No, I did not. I'm gonna have to edit that out. Pinsiders, you are awesome. We love you all. Do not listen Your tools. to the, people the, who sell on Pinsider tools. Oh, the views <laughs> expressed by Bruce Nightingale do not necessarily represent the entire Slam Pit Tell Podcast staff. Okay, wait a sec. Hold on. Three games I've tried to buy in the past month. Yes, with cash. And not a little cash, like five or six dollars. Almost what they're asking for. And I'm still getting dicked around. Tools! <laughs> All our tools! Don't listen Jeez. to him. We love Pinsiders. Yes, we love Pace. And especially, we, we, even, we, we love our Facebookers even more, though, because they go to our site. Yes, yes. <laughs> Somebody's so, kissing ass here, and I'm not the ass kisser. Oh, so, so are, are we done? No, we're not done. We're not done? <laughs> you're gonna be, are you going to bash more Pinsiders? No, I'm going to pay the bills. You're going to pay the bills. Well, I, I, That's what I meant. Are we ready to pay the bills? I think we're ready to pay the bills. Let's pay the bills. Okay, so coming up, uh, uh, where is it? The Rock Fantasy, uh, what's it called? Uh, Gridiron. Gridiron Greats. Gridiron Greats. Rock Fantasy. September. The only way you'll miss it is if you're in jail, and if you are, break out. No. Uh, that's September 11th. Uh, I think I'm going to be going to that one, actually. I it's think on a that Sunday, one. isn't it? It is on a Sunday. Yeah, that's the only issue fun. for me. I, I got to finagle stuff around. Uh, Rock Fantasy Summer Bash is September 17th. Good time by all. West New York Pinball and Buffalo Pinball are starting up this month. So for me, it's more leagues and Central New York Pinball. Now, if I can just get Ron to come out to Central New York Pinball, because guess what? Guess it's what? On a- it's on a Friday what they're talking about now. Still, it's like... No, no, and here's what you do. Here's what you do. How, o- how often is this league? Once every month. Okay. Here's what you do. You come out to Central New York, and you come to my house. You stay at my house, and you can leave whenever you want. Yes, yes. See? I'm trying. He's, Eric try, he's trying, folks, but this is, Eric, this is like three and a half hour drive to Bruce's house once no, a month I mean, to play I'll in a league. I'll League. go out with Zach. I'll go with Zach, and I'll drive your car back. I just, uh, I just an easy. That's a, that's an easy one. Oh, I'm just not into the driving thing as much anymore. Come on, you know you want to do it. It's killing me. Uh, to to be continued. Magic pinball points for Upstate New York, which are going to big time change after the tournament. Okay, so uh, anything else? Uh, w, don't forget www.pinballlifter.com. 
buy them, uh, love them, lift them, lift your games in awesomeness and safety. Be at York. Save your back. They will be yes. at York, which Use will be brain. when? Uh, September 30th, October 1st. Uh, and plus, what do you guys want to hear from us? There you Please. go. Please what do you guys us. want to hear more of? Are you sick of tournaments? Do they suck? Well, we're going to talk about what we want to talk about. But we will talk about new stuff if yes. you want us to talk about it. So send your comments or your ideas to either you can go to our Facebook page, Slam Tilt Podcast, or you can send these suggestions and comments and how much you love us and, and uh, Pinsiders. You can tell or us. Hate us. Tell, uh, or, or hate us. Or hate us. Me. Yeah, Pinsiders might hate us now. You can, no, they just hate me. You can, email, yeah, you can email Bruce how he's a dick for, <laughs> for hating you at slamtiltpodcast at gmail.com. That's slamtiltpodcast at gmail.com. Unless you're selling me something, then you're cool. And if you actually do sell it to me. <laughs> and in our YouTube channel, I will, whenever I do get the stars finished, I will eventually have that up there. Uh, I'll, I'll put, be putting that on my own YouTube channel also because I kind of got a video series going with the stars. But I figure just since we've been mentioning that on the show so many times and when Bruce gets the centaur finished, maybe we could put that video up on the uh, Slam Till Podcast YouTube channel. See centaur. the fruits of our labors. Centaur. And when freedom is working 100%, we could do the same thing. Mm, yes, centaur is good. Centaur is good. Centaur is very good. Hold on, give me two seconds. I'm going to play something really funny. He's going to play something really funny. Yes, I is. So hold on. Hold give on. Me two seconds. Two I'm seconds. Gonna, I'm doing. I'm doing something off the cuff. He's doing something off the cuff. Should I do voices now? Yeah, go ahead. Do Talk. wacky, wacky, Why, wacky waiting. Uh, this is Krusty. You're listening to the Slam Tilt Podcast. Uh, where's my money? Here we go. Oh, it won't do it for me because of the freaking... Ah, hold on. Massive fail. Yeah, I, I hear, kind of hear Centaur. Yes, I can't get it because I don't have the balls and it won't go to the... You don't have the go balls to, to get it? Well, well come I, on, man. My balls are breaking. I don't have the balls in it, so no, it won't go into... I'm breaking your balls. That's the way it, it works. It won't go into the demo mode without the balls in it. Oh. And that's the best mode of all. That's the best mode of all. All right yep, then. So, so that was that, that was all I I, I failed to. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, that was episode six, Revenge of the Sith. We'll be returning with episode seven, The Force Awakens. Is that what? That yes, was? the yeah. Force Awakens. Yes, the 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 pinballs awaken. Yes, the pinball is awakening, and uh, the Swats will be with the you. The Swats will be with you. So thank you, everyone, and see you later. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Night.